If you're a lover of English history, then you've almost certainly visited the nation's most historic towns and cities. Places like York, Chester, Durham, Oxford, London and more. But it's not just in these popular tourist destinations that you can discover a wealth of English history. In fact, there are plenty of far less visited but no less interesting towns and cities to be found all over the country, which may not be major tourist destinations but are some of the greatest treasure troves of English history. So let's take a look at five underrated English towns and cities that you must visit if you love your history. Number five, Hull. A couple of decades ago, you'd have heard comedians on the telly simply utter the name Hull as a byword for a dull place where nothing goes on. But that's not the case anymore, as this Humberside city has spectacularly reinvented itself as a hub of culture, things to do, and a wealth of captivating history. Though it's still arguably not top of the list of tourist destinations in Yorkshire, Hull is well known for its stunning modern aquarium, the Deep, one of the best in the country as well as its range of captivating maritime museums, which tell the story of a city that was once home to the largest docks in England, and was one of the nation's most important ports of all. But there's so much more to Hull's enthralling history than its maritime legacy. More than a thousand years ago, Hull began life as a tiny trading post operated by monks from a nearby abbey. But in the early 13th century, it was bought by King Edward I, who used the land to build a modern, planned town known as Kingstown, or Kingston, upon Hull. Despite taking its full name from royalty though, Hull has existed for centuries as a city with a famously rebellious streak when it comes to the monarchy. In the city today, you can find the ruins of the Beverly Gate, a historic town gate which was famously shut in the face of King Charles I in 1642 an affront to the controversial king that's often regarded as the very first act of the English Civil War. Hull was also a major player in the dramatic events of the Glorious Revolution of the 1680s, one of the first towns to declare its support for William of Orange taking the throne from King James II, which saw the townspeople famously face off against the king's authorities who became holed up in the old castle not far from where the deep stands today. Notably, Hull is also the hometown of William Wilberforce, one of Britain's leading anti-slavery campaigners at the turn of the 19th century, and the city today showcases all of its history and more on the fantastically diverse streets of its centre, where you can stroll along historic docks, explore vast city gardens, navigate the narrow cobbled streets of Old Hull, and gaze out over the majestic Humber estuary too. Number 4. Coventry Devastated by German bombs in the Blitz of the Second World War, Coventry is well known today for its mid-20th century architecture and consequently a perceived lack of historic charm, but that couldn't be further from the truth. For centuries in the Middle Ages, Coventry was easily one of the largest and most important cities in England as a centre of the nation's cloth trade, which brought in immense wealth that gave birth to a medieval metropolis which is still easily visible between the city's enormous modern buildings. The city's most famous medieval landmark is of course the ruins of the old cathedral, left standing as a reminder of the horrors of the Second World War, when Coventry, a significant centre of British industry at the time, was heavily targeted by the Luftwaffe during the Blitz. But elsewhere in Coventry, you can find the remains of the more than 600-year-old city walls, one of the finest medieval guild halls still standing in Britain today, the fetching ruins of St Mary's Priory, and a few tiny cobbled streets lined with timber-framed houses that are nestled in between the grand parades of the 20th century city. Famously, Coventry was also the place where Lady Godiva is said to have rode naked on horseback through the city's streets in a protest of solidarity with the townspeople against her husband's oppressive taxes around the time of the 11th century. And while the city's post-war rebuild may not be top of many people's list of things to see, Coventry's 20th century architecture is actually some of the most spectacular in the country, as an early idealistic example of what a modern futuristic British city could look like, with monumental fountains and strikingly immense plazas dominating the city centre. Number 3. Leicester Leicester is one of the biggest cities in the UK, and as such it's a place with so much history and so much to see. 
you'll likely know it as the home of Walker's Crisps and one of the great underdog stories in English football. But it's also one of the oldest cities in the entire country, with more than 2,000 years of history under its belt. Leicester was famously a major population centre during the Roman occupation of Britain, when the city was known by the name Ratai Coriel Tauvorum, home to a lively civilian community, a bustling Roman forum and an exquisite bathhouse, the remains of which are still visible in the city's 1900-year-old jewellery wall today, one of the most impressive Roman landmarks in Britain today. But those were just the beginnings of Leicester's distinguished history, because in the medieval era, the city once again became a highly significant population centre in England's East Midlands. While the modern city is home to an immense urban sprawl, the very heart of Leicester hints at its illustrious past, with an array of captivating medieval streets surrounding the fetching timber-framed Guildhall and the soaring Leicester Cathedral, an iconic city landmark that plays host to the remains of one of England's most famous monarchs. Back in 2012, you might remember that the remains of King Richard III were incredibly uncovered in a car park in the centre of Leicester, this being the car park in question. And just three years later in 2015, the king was afforded a ceremonial funeral that paraded through the streets of Leicester, before his burial inside the city's cathedral. Nowadays, an entire district of the city has been dedicated to Leicester's association with Richard III, the last English king to die in battle, when he was defeated at the nearby Battle of Bosworth in 1485. Those are just a couple of highlights in the many centuries of Leicester's fascinating history. But a visit to the city isn't complete without a visit to the King Richard III centre, the grounds of Leicester's medieval castle, and the city's covered marketplace, which is always busy with traders, carrying on a local tradition of more than 700 years. Number 2. King's Lynn Nestled away on the western edge of Norfolk is a town with possibly the densest collection of historic landmarks in the whole country, Kings Lynn. Once upon a time, Kings Lynn was one of the four most important ports in England, trading extensively with the prestigious Hanseatic League of Merchants in mainland Europe, and the town today is home to a wealth of stunningly preserved landmarks from that medieval heyday. Kings Lynn is well known as the home of Hans House, an immense medieval era warehouse that's the last Hanseatic building in Britain, while it's also a place where you'll find street after street of spectacular old houses, from the colourful facades of Nelson Street to the grand townhouses of King Street, and not one but two historic town marketplaces, named the Tuesday and Saturday Marketplace after the days when they host markets. The town is also home to an immense parish church in Kings Lynn Minster, the largest chapel in England, St Nicholas's Chapel, and the remains of a number of medieval monasteries, including the spectacular ruins of Greyfriars, closed down on the orders of King Henry VIII in the 16th century. Kings Lynn's name is even a nod to Henry VIII, to whom the town had to pledge allegiance after the English Reformation. But the town is also well known for its unusual affection for another, even more controversial king that being John. John afforded Kings Lynn many of the rights and charters that helped it to grow into one of England's most important ports. But it was in this town where the king contracted dysentery, the disease that killed him. And it was just outside Kings Lynn that John famously lost more than £70 million worth of personal treasure into the marshy land surrounding the Wash, treasure that's yet to be rediscovered to this day. A day out in Kings Lynn offers no shortage of things to see and do, with an array of captivating museums detailing the town's mercantile history, and a number of historic pubs and theatres lining the town's main streets. Though if you somehow run out of things to do, you can always hop across the River Great Ouse to the delightful rural village of West Lynn by taking a trip on the historic West Lynn Ferry, which has been operating for more than 700 years. Number 1. Pontefract Pontefract is not Yorkshire's premier tourist destination, and at first glance it's not exactly the prettiest town in the county. But there are a few market towns in England which are so variedly rich in history. The town takes its name from a Pontus Fractus, or a broken bridge that was once a vital crossing point of the nearby River Eyre. But it was destroyed when the forces of William the Conqueror came to suppress resistance in northern England after the Norman Conquest. In fact, there's a wealth of Norman history to be found on display in the town, not least with the ruins of the 11th century Pontefract Castle, a captivating medieval landmark that's entirely free to visit today. 
King Edward I once said that he who holds Pontefract holds the key to the north. And that was principally because of its legendary fortress, known to many as the most fearsome castle in all of England, which once towered over the surrounding landscape atop a prominent mound. It was inside Pontefract Castle that King Richard II died in the year 1400, possibly starved or tortured to death by the guards of his usurper, King Henry IV. And while this event only furthered Pontefract's legendarily terrifying reputation, the castle today lies in ruins, after it was plundered and mostly demolished by the forces of Oliver Cromwell at the end of the English Civil War. Now Pontefract is a cradle of Civil War history. The castle is said to have been the final point of royalist resistance in 1649 against the parliamentarians. A royalist garrison inside even kept fighting for three months after King Charles I's execution in London. But perhaps the best example of the ferocity of the conflict around Pontefract is found just on the edge of the town centre, with the staggering ruins of All Saints Church, which was annihilated by bombardment in a parliamentarian siege of the town, as Pontefract changed hands between the two warring sides a number of times throughout the conflict. But the castle and historic church are just two of the many riveting landmarks to be found in Pontefract. To the north of the town, you'll find the truly beautiful Pontefract Racecourse, a vast green space open to freely explore outside of race meets, while the town centre is dotted with an array of historic churches and a seemingly endless array of pubs, Pontefract often touted as one of the towns in England with the most pubs per person. Pontefract's illustrious history makes it an utterly enthralling place to visit, but the town is also renowned as a historic hub of industry, particularly in the manufacturing of sweets, most famously traditional pomfrey cakes, licorice treats that are said to be the oldest sweet in Britain, drawing their origins from licorice grown in and around the town for more than a thousand years. Nowadays you'll find plenty of delicious stops on Pontefract streets. There's even a small gift shop and museum in the back of the town's Haribo factory, one of two sweet factories still in operation today, though once upon a time there were as many as 13. So whether you're looking to delve into the origins of a traditional British treat, stroll through the enchanting streets of one of the nation's most important medieval ports, gaze up at the staggering ruins of a historic cathedral, or something else entirely, these five towns and cities just off the beaten tourist track are well worth visiting if you're a lover of English history. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to visiting one of these five towns or cities for yourself in future.